This is the brand new Sony 24 to 70 f2.8 G Master lens, the lightest and smallest you can find. And I gotta be honest, I've never owned a 24 to 70. And we should talk about why. Does that feel like the smallest and lightest 24 to 70 you've ever held in your hands? Smaller than my lightsaber collection at home. <laughs> Oh, and we got a brand new uh, Not Me Only drop, a uh, new t-shirt, not the bomber yet. We're not ready for that yet. Are you ready for the bomber? No, but I'm ready for this. <laughs> so this is version two of Sony's 24 to 70, and it is the lightest. The last one was 886 grams, and this new one is 695 grams, which when you're holding it, I, I don't know, it doesn't, I'm not like immediately like, this is so light. It feels like really high quality and it still has weight to it. But uh, yeah, every, every gram, matters, of course. The equivalent Sigma is 835 grams, and the Canon is the beefiest at 900 grams. Tamron is lighter, but that's a 28 to 75 mil, I believe. And so can't really compare because whenever you go wider, things get bigger and heavier. So that's a tough comparison to make. And it is also smaller in size. Used to be 87.6 millimeters by 136 millimeters. Now it's 87.8 and 119.9 millimeters. So that's almost two centimeters smaller. It's actually a little bit smaller than the 16 to 35 now. And the Canon is 88.5 by 125.7, and the Sigma is 87.8 by 122.9, which means that Sony designed this lens to be just a tiny bit smaller than any other 24 to 70. I think just so they could call it the smallest and lightest 24 to 70. I'll take it. And a pretty big new change for me is the minimum focus distance. It used to be 38 centimeters, now it's 21 centimeters, which actually makes a pretty big difference. I like to be able to shoot whatever kind of shot that I want, and then sometimes when the minimum focus distance is too far, you can't get that nice close up that you wanted to, that kind of like almost macro shot and so you're limited. Uh, so 21 centimeters, really great. The Canon was already 21 centimeters, so uh, yeah, just a nice little upgrade. I'm just gonna keep doing this till Bubbly starts sending me some. There's also less focus breathing now, so as you're focusing, it's not doing this little zooming in and out. That's basically what focus breathing is. You can de-click the aperture ring, which can be really nice if you're using like a, like a motor on here to, adjust the aperture. And interestingly, there is a switch to make the zoom either smooth or tight. So it's just a little bit harder to zoom, which in theory, I guess, would give you more control over the zoom. And the autofocus is incredible. It's interesting how in video, Sony has gone from just like, okay autofocus to now really good autofocus, maybe better than the Canons. It's very fast and snappy and that's because of their linear motors. They actually have 4XD linear motors, which to me says nothing, but the way the focusing happens, it's literally like moving in and out like this um, with like, is there like magnets inside? I am not an engineer, so I'm not gonna go into the mechanics of inside <laughs> what happens. All I know is that Sony's lenses are very snappy when it comes to focus. And this thing will run you $2,299, which is pretty pricey, of course. And that leads me to why I've never owned a 24 to 70. But first, let's let's see what this thing can do. Let's Let's give it a good shot here. I don't think we should be shooting with the FX3 in the rain. It has like fans and stuff. This probably isn't a good idea. The fans will just evaporate the water. Too. Oh yeah. Back in shoot, back in Hollywood, I always <laughs> used to use FX3s, which I was actually filming Aquaman before. <laughs> we had FX3s underwater attached to our, our scuba gear. <laughs> okay, while we take a break from the rain, we have the new NMO, not me, only minimal boxy tee. Look at us, like twins out here. I call them the foxy tees. <laughs> <laughs> 
If you didn't hear, we started a clothing brand. No, this is not merch. This is legit clothes designed in Norway, made custom from start to finish, not off some merch website. And I didn't tell you guys, when we were in Norway, I got to meet Tori and Henrietta, the incredibly talented designers behind NMO for the very first time. In the flesh. Oh, Good to meet you, man. <laughs> Hey, hey, Joel. Oh my Tori. goodness. Nice to you meet you. You guys exist. <laughs> yeah, you're real people. <laughs> nice to meet you. It's like a nice <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Joel. <laughs> It was so nice hanging out with them for the first time in person, which is crazy that we started a clothing line without even meeting each other. And tell me this, why are the Norwegians just so freaking cool and like good looking and just perfect? I don't, I don't get it. Why are they so sexy? Also, apparently people want to see Isaac without a shirt on. Not Me Only is high quality, minimalist clothing and we are giving back 10% of every purchase to charities and good causes. The new boxy tee is straight cut, it's more rugged, it's a little bit more heavy duty, but still breathable and comfortable with some stretch to it. Also notice no seams on the arms, just, you know, the little details. And this is also your very last chance to get your hands on the hoodie and the sweater. These will never be sold again. We might make different color, different modified versions of them, but this will be the very last time we will sell these. And can I just say how cool it is to see you guys wearing the NMO clothes? So if you do buy some, please post it on social media, tag me and NMO on it, and we would love to shout you guys out. Back to the rainy B-roll. Isaac, have you ever owned a 24 to 70? No. Why not? Well, so the different codex of... <laughs> <laughs> asking the wrong person, asking the wrong person. Okay, why have I never bought a 24 to 70? Well, the reason is it's kind of an average lens. And what I mean by that is, it's, it's wide, but not super wide. 24 is like, it's like kind of wide. It's zoomed in, but it's not like super zoomed in like a 7200, it's only 70. It's fast, but it's not F1.4 fast. So it's kind of just like decent at everything and not the best at anything. I don't know if this is making any sense to you, but I always kind of just bought a nice super wide lens, like a 16 to 35, like I'm using now. And then I would buy a few primes, like a 24, a 35, and maybe like an 85, the 50. I, I used to love the 50 when I started. Now I'm kind of, eh, 50 is all right. And then a 7200 for like the times where you actually can't get close enough and you need a real telephoto zoom lens. For me, when it comes to zoom lenses, I've always preferred kind of like the super wide, zoom lenses and then the telephoto zoom lenses and everything in between is kind of just like mm, like a 24 to 105 not interested now that's just me and my personal experiences it could be totally different for you for example for the new podcast I'm, I'm starting a new podcast I don't know if I've told have I told you guys that I don't, I don't even know for that a 24 to 70 would probably actually be pretty good it fits that nice range. Whereas like for YouTube like this, ah, it's a little tricky. 24 is not quite wide enough and then 70, it's fine. But when do I really need a 70 mil? And in the end, I only have so much space in my camera bag, so I can't bring all of the possible lenses out there. And the 24 to 70 has always just kind of not interested in me that much, just because it is an average lens, I would say. So the Sony 24 to 70 is the smallest and lightest and probably best average lens out there. I'm not trying to be a negative Nancy. Those are just those are just my experiences. I'm just trying to relay my experience to you guys. All right, hope you guys like this video. Uh, go and get some of that NMO before it's all gone. I know you guys will love it. All right, bye. Why do I why do I always end my videos like I'm, a, I'm like a crazy hurry steal? <laughs> <laughs>